Alrighty, welcome back everyone to another episode of Best Abilities. So far we made a video on the Fighter and Mage class, and in this one we're going to talk about Marksman. I feel like of all the classes, this one's going to be ironically the easiest to do, since Marksmen have the same general ability format for their kits. But in spite of that, there's also a high chance this list will be the most contentious, as it largely comes down to what you value as an ADC. So it's a lot more subjective than other classes. Just to recap in case this is the first episode you see, the main premise of Best Abilities is that I take 3 abilities of each type, Passive, Q, W, E, and Ultimate, out of the 24 or so Marksmen in the game. So for the sake of eliminating ambiguity, these abilities will be judged in a vacuum, extracted from the context of their kit. Relevant aspects, such as the resource bar on Zet's Haymaker or mana and energy costs will remain intact. But I guess in regards to this episode, Kaisa's abilities will not take their evolved forms into consideration unless their passive is included as one of the three best. Additionally, I'll be looking at how useful they are regardless of circumstance. There's obviously a lot of powerful skills in certain situations, but the objective is to create a hypothetical champion who is as consistent and all-purpose as they can feasibly be. So essentially what we're doing is creating our own theoretical champion by sifting through the top 3 of each ability out of the marksman class to create a super marksman. In case you're still confused as to how I go about this, I recommend you watch the first episode on fighters. That one has the full in-depth explanation, being the first episode and all. So let's get right into it, hope you guys don't roast me too hard in the comments section. Marksman passives have been getting increasingly more and more complicated over the years. Just about anyone who came out after Callista has a passive that defines their entire playstyle, while older marksmen have your garden variety one sentence passive. So I think it goes without saying that all three will involve modern ADCs, mainly because the only thing keeping those passives balanced is that they're on that champion. Imagine how good it would be if you slapped other abilities. On that note, my three choices are Senna's Absolution, Akshan's Dirty Fighting, and Callista's Martial Poise. At the expense of lower crit damage and attack speed scaling, anytime you land a basic attack on enemy champions, hitting them again does bonus current health damage and collects mist over the course of a game. Each stack of mist grants bonus attack damage, and for every 20 stacks, you get bonus range and crit chance. Any crit chance beyond 100% is converted into lifesteal instead. Additionally, your auto attacks by default do 1.2 times your normal attack damage and grant bonus movement speed for half a second. I'm not entirely sure how this would translate to other ADCs, but having a passive like this is honestly kind of broken. Bonus AD, attack range, crit chance, and lifesteal just from attacks. I would be terrified to see something like this on a normal marksman's kit. Granted, like I said, you're trading a lot of bonus attack speed, but the benefits far outweigh the cost. Late game Senna is already a monster to begin with. Next we have Akshan's Dirty Fighting, yet another passive that's only really balanced by the fact that it's on him. By default, all of your auto attacks have a chance to strike twice, or you can choose to hit only once and get bonus movement speed to kite enemies with. Additionally, you have a 3 hit passive, and you get a shield if you use it against a champion. This is by far the best passive in the game for anyone who prefers to build on hit effects, enough said. Finally, we have Callista's Martial Poise. Now I am aware of the inherent limitations of this passive. For one, if you lose vision of your target at any point before your spears land, they completely miss, and you only do 90% of your total AD in damage with each attack. But combat mobility of this caliber is simply far too good to pass up. Marksmen have lackluster mobility as a whole, and something like this would allow players to cut out virtually anyone so long as they're not CC'd. If Callista had better defensive or self heal tools, this passive would be way more effective. Honorable mentions go to Ash's Frost Shot for allowing any and all attacks to slow enemies, which would be ridiculously broken on anyone who prioritizes on hit effects. Picture Kogma or Vayne with Frost Shot. Actually don't, that sounds terrifying. Second honorable mention goes to Jin's Whisper, which is a more extreme version of Senna's Absolution, although in my opinion it's not as all-purpose as hers. For most marksmen, Q consists of a basic damaging spell, something to use in between auto attacks, usually as a means to wave clear since you don't attack fast enough early game to push waves at a reasonable pace. That said, there's a good bit of variety in how you want to exert your pressure with your main ability, so it's a pick your poison type scenario. I decided to go with Zeri's Burst Fire, Senna's Piercing Darkness, and Jinx's Switcheroo, each for different reasons. Obviously you're not getting the slow on your auto attacks, as that technically constitutes Zeri's passive in addition to her living battery. Moreover, you're not going to get the piercing effect from Spark Surge as that's on her E. But think about it for a moment. Burst Fire is, for all intents and purposes, a basic attack skill shot with 825 range and a cooldown that's proportional to your attack speed. If you had this on any champion with a normal basic attack, you pretty much have two auto attacks put together. At 2.5 attack speed, you could be throwing out like 4 autos per second, which is just insane. Theoretically, you can combine Burst Fire with either Jin or Senna's passives to circumvent the reduced attack speed, getting the best of both worlds. You can pair this up with Ash's Frost Shot for infinite slows or Auction's Dirty Fighting for infinite 3 hit passes. Callista's? Mm, you'd have to be scripting to microstep that fast, but I think you get the point. This attack has the potential to be abused like crazy if you took it from Zeri and gave it to someone else. The same applies for Piercing Darkness as well, it's a long range attack that does damage, souls enemies and heals allies at the same time while applying lifesteal. It's a long cooldown of 15 seconds, but auto attacks reduce the cooldown by 1 second on hit. 
Now, Senna's Q is kept in check primarily through her reduced attack speed. If you were to equip Piercing Darkness onto an ADC with normal attack speed, or say Akshan's passive, this Q could become virtually spammable if you can afford the mana cost. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage in comparison to other Marksman Qs, but the healing and slow utility makes up for that. Though if you forego Senna's passive, the max cast range on Q is only 600. Even so, that's not that bad. As for Switcheroo, you essentially have two different weapons. One's a minigun that gives you up to 130% attack speed permanently, while the other is a long-range rocket that does splash damage. It's a very solid Q to have on any marks and probably would even be better if you join it with either Ashes passive or a lot of mobility, which are two things that hold Switcheroo back in the context of Jinx's kit. I will admit that as far as DPS goes, it heavily depends on her passive to achieve that pentakill status, but even so, having that kind of DPS potential cannot be ignored. Honorable mentions go to Twitch's Ambush and Vayne's Tumble. Ambush has a lot of applications for any marksman, especially if you build one with burst damage. Imagine Jin sneaking up behind you with a loaded fourth shot. Vayne's Tumble is a fast repositioning tool on a low cooldown, making it super useful for dodging, pursuing, or retreating, even without the stealth from Final Hour. At 80% bonus damage rank 5, it's akin to having a guaranteed critical strike that stacks with crit damage. Ws are the ADC's main utility spell. If it's a damaging ability, it's typically one with long range that can supplement the neutral game. Otherwise, it would be a combat buff of some sort, usually increasing attack speed. Though for the most part, the marksman classes Ws and Es are interchangeable depending on who you play. The three I'm going to go with are Samira's Blade Whirl, Tristana's Rocket Jump, and Vayne's Silver Bolts. Blade World received a major nerf in patch 11.4 where it lost half a second of active frames, but even with that, it's still in the top 3 best Ws for Marksman. For 3 quarters of a second, any and all projectiles that so much as touch the circle around her or within her are destroyed. So you can think of this as Yasuo's wind wall that lasts shorter but covers a much wider area, and it follows your immediate position. You could argue that it's only a worthwhile ability to have when the enemy team has a lot of projectiles, but ask yourself this, when will you ever run into a game where there's not at least a couple flying around? Next up is Tristana's Rocket Jump, being one of only two mobility spells nested in the W slot for Marksman, the other being Corky's Valkyrie. Rocket Jump is strictly better in almost every way though. It has a lower cooldown, mana cost and more travel distance, and even a quarter second cast time which allows it to buffer it against displacements such as Blitzhooks. Additionally, takedowns on enemy champions allow it to reset so you can get in, dispatch someone, then get out. If you value mobility as the Marksman, you can't find a better W than Tristana's. Free target dash that resets on takedown. And then we have Silver Bolts, Vayne's most infamous ability. Every 3 attacks on hit deals 12% max health bonus true damage, the one form of damage that is impossible to itemize against. Normally, true damage is balanced around the fact that while it cannot be mitigated by armor, magic resist, or even damage reduction like exhaust, it also can't be amplified by sources like Presti Attack either. Therefore, building health items is the right choice, but percent max health true damage invalidates health, armor, and magic resist altogether. I already mentioned before that if you gave this to someone who can apply on-hit effects faster than she can, you're looking at the best tank shredder or rather anything shredder in the game. Imagine how well Lucian would perform with Silver Bolts in place of Ardent Blaze, or maybe if Vayne had Akshan's passive which would have two 3-hit passes on top of one. Purchase Aguinsu's Rage Blade and you'd be doing arguably more true damage than physical. Honorable mentions go to Ash's Volley and Jin's Deadly Flourish. Volley is without question the best neutral tool in the entire game for Marksman. It covers such a wide area and does just a little bit more damage than a standard auto attack. While you lose the AoE slow without her passive, it's still good enough to be worth mentioning. Deadly Flourish is a nasty long range route that provides some much needed utility. Fortunately, the passive mark required to land the route is attached to his W and not the passive, unlocking all of its features. And if theoretically you had another long range hard CC like Ash Arrow, you would have the most annoying pick potential in the game. Alright, so E has roughly the same connotations as W as far as what type of ability you can look out for, but there's a greater emphasis placed on mobility for the majority of the cast. With that in mind, I think I'm going to pick Akshan's Heroic Swing, Zeri's Spark Surge, and to add some variety, let's go with Ash's Hawkshot. Heroic Swing, it's just, it's so broken. Look, if it were just the dash, that would be fine, but while swinging, you automatically turbo fire arrows at any nearby target. On top of that, it applies on hit effects, lifesteal, and can critically strike with each shot. And on top of that, it also resets on takedown, so you can use it again and again and again. It's just broken. There's no ADC in the game who wouldn't want this. I don't care who they are. Zeri Spark Surge in comparison may look marginally weaker, but it's still a fantastic dash. Let's just assume you don't have Burst Fire. It's a regular dash that resets your auto attack timer, but that's about it. And since you have neither Burst Fire nor Living Batteries Charge Auto Attacks, you're not going to be able to lower the dash cooldown. But in her defense, any free targeted dash on a Marksman's E has a long cooldown that has a cooldown reduction clause in it like Lucian and Ezreal. I chose Zeri's on account of it being able to dash indefinitely over walls, making it potentially better than either Arcane Shift or Relentless Pursuit, even if you don't have all the other fancy stuff with it. Though if you decide to take Burst Fire, then you're good to go. 
Finally, Ash is Hawkshot. Now this heavily depends on how much you value vision control, but if you think about it, each charge of Hawkshot is a global farsight trinket. With this, you can scout for the enemy jungler in laning phase, you can check to see where everyone is in Baron or Dragon Pit. You can do so much with this thing that it boggles my mind why people undervalue it. Granted, it's no combat spell, but knowing where your opponents are is half the battle, so it might as well be. Towards the mid to late game, where getting caught even once can result in losing a lot around the map, remotely accessible global true sight is part of why Ash is a consistently safe and effective pick. Honorable mentions go to Jinx's Flame Choppers and Tristana's Explosive Charge. Now that it can stop dashes dead in their tracks, Flame Choppers are fantastic zoning tools, especially in choke points since there's no way to ignore them. As for Tristan Z, it does a lot of damage under the condition that you can attack the same target several times in quick succession. Again, if you have something like Akshan's passive, achieving this is very easy to do. That being said, without her passive draw a bead, its base cast range is diminished significantly. Last but not least, we have ultimates. Marksmen also are separated into three categories, globals, buffs, and big fights. So what I'm going to do for this one is pick one from each category, then in the honorable mentions I'm going to pick another one so we have six. For the globals, I'm picking Ash's Enchanted Crystal Arrow as the main one and Jinx's Super Mega Death Rocket for the HM. For the buffs, I'll pick Twitch, with Vayne as the honorable mention, and for the big fight, I'll go with Lucian's Calling and Zaya's Featherstorm. Ash's Crystal Arrow needs no introduction. It's a global skill shot that can inflict up to a 3.5 second stun, the longest in the game. It is the best tool in the game for picks, no questions asked, and in the late game, you can easily throw out one every 30 seconds or so. There's nary a situation where Ash's ult is not worth bringing unless you're specifically responsible for being the main damage on the team. Jinx's Death Rocket trades crowd control for raw damage. Out of all the damage in global ults, I went with hers, since it does percent max health damage whereas the others do only flat. You might say that its reliance on targets being at low health makes it less consistent than the likes of Ezreal's, but oftentimes you don't use the global projectile ult to start a fight, you use it to finish one. Granted, one of the best things about it was its ability to outsmite Baron thanks to having no cap on monsters. Most of the time it would do like 1400 damage or something ridiculous, but that doesn't change how good of an execute type ability it is. On to the buffs, Twitch's Spray and Prey offers the best combination of stats a teamfight AD carry can ask for. 300 bonus range, penetrating attacks, and bonus attack damage. If you were to take this along with, say, Jinx's Q, that's a recipe for disaster for the enemy team, let alone taking lethal tempo and having almost a thousand attack range. There's also Vayne's Final Hour. It gives a comparable attack bonus, but instead of bonus range and splash damage, it grants you bonus movement speed and a second of invisibility upon casting your Q. Now I know in the skill description, it explicitly states Tumble, but if we were to go off Silas's interaction with Vayne's ult, it says he gains the bonus movement speed passive, as well as invisibility upon casting Chain Lash, so we can go off the assumption that any Q triggers it. You know what this means? If you have Vayne's ultimate with Jinx Q, every single time you switch weapons, you enter stealth. Let that sink in for a moment. You good? Okay, let's move on. To finish it off, we have the big fighters, which go to Lucian. While Misfortune's Bullet Time has more potential damage output, I just like the ability to move around with the calling, so you can reposition as needed. Though if you somehow layer all shots on a single person, we're talking like over 4000 damage anyway. Defensively, I choose Zaya's Featherstorm. You won't be able to draw the feathers back to you, but going untargetable for that long can save your life in so many situations, especially if you're a marksman. I did have half a mind to choose Kindred's Lime's Respite, but that one has a chance to backfire on you, whereas this one doesn't. Alrighty, so that wraps up my list for Marksman. What do you guys think? Do you believe the other abilities should be on this list, or do you agree with my choices more or less? Let me know in the comments down below. Again, circumstances matter. There are some abilities that are fantastic depending on the scenario, but I wanted to go for a generalist approach. If you enjoyed the video, it would be awesome if you gave it a like and subscribe. Consider following me on Twitter, joining my Discord server, and checking out my previous two episodes on fighters and mages if you haven't yet. But for now, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon in the next one. Probably gonna do tanks next, so stay tuned, and take care.